I was not sure that I was going to like this feature, but it turns out I absolutely love it. Hey, it's Jason. I'm here with my 2023 Ford Maverick XL Hybrid, and I have had it for one week, and I've put about 400 miles on it. I haven't done a ton of driving, but honestly, I don't drive a ton every week. It's usually every few weeks I do one long trip for projects and whatnot. What am I going to talk about in this video? I'm not going to give you a review of the Hybrid XL. What I am going to do is tell you what I like and don't like about it, and maybe you can relate, maybe you learn something new, or maybe at the very least, you uh, have some ideas when you're getting a Ford Maverick about things to pay attention to. So let's hop in and start talking about it. Okay, so when I'm thinking about the 2023 Ford Maverick XL Hybrid, I'm going to start with the things that I don't particularly like about it. These might be nitpicky, and of course I kind of knew about most of these before I actually purchased the Hybrid uh, XL. The first thing that bothers me a little bit is all of the plastic. This is just modern day cars have this, but for a pickup truck, I am a little concerned that, you know, I could see fading. It, it seems pretty flimsy on here. And I've seen reports of this actually bubbling from people. So I think because I keep cars a long time, if you don't keep them a long time, you may not even care, but I intend to put, you know, 250,000 miles on this bad boy and keep it at least 10 years. This will probably fade. I am going to park it under a carport though and try to uh, try to keep it, you know, good to go. The other thing I don't like is if you buy the XL, you're not going to have some of the components in the back. I realize this truck is designed to have the rail management system where you get more places to hook things. But if you don't do that, there's no hooks at the top. I always like to have hooks at the top and the bottom. You have them at the top back there and the bottom back here. What I would have liked to have seen on the XL or more hooks and hooks that aren't screwed in, but hooks that are actually part of the bed, like in a heavy duty truck at the bottom and the top. Now, I'm gonna obviously resolve that with an adapter or something. They make all kinds of things to go in here because when I tow stuff, or I should say when I haul stuff, I absolutely wanna make sure I have plenty of hooks because right now on the base XL model, if you're hauling stuff, you only have this one back here, this one back here, and then two up there. You cannot hook anything to this plastic. It will just break off if it's any weight. You can see it's not exactly that durable. So you are somewhat limited, but I do know there's a lot of bed management solutions on the market, but that's going to have to be something I investigate. Number three thing, staying in the uh, bed of the truck, if you get the base XL model, it has little covers on things, like those outlets that are back here. Plastic outlet covers and gizmos where they cover up features breaking. And uh, these little grommets over time, I feel like are going to corrode with sun and hot weather. And then you're just going to end up having open holes in the back of the, uh, of the bed and plastic, that's all. So from the outside, there's not really anything else major that you can change. But I would say this by far, and I've, I own a lot of cars in the car collection and I've owned a lot of cars, the amount of bugs that get on this windshield is insane. I actually cleaned it a little bit before I took this video with the lipo fluid, but I think the aerodynamics of this bad boy, it just takes everything. And I've been reading a lot about people getting busted windshields and things popping off the highway. And I think that's all just indicative of a very low truck, a very small truck, and kind of bubbly and whatnot at the front for aerodynamics. I am gonna be putting a bug shield here, which is more of a hood protector. They don't make kind of the bug shields I'm used to, which I hope will keep some of this. This is cleaned because I'm gonna be doing the bug shield here, here in a moment. This is usually just tattered with bugs and other grime. So keep that in mind. I like to keep things nice, so I have to address that. But there's nothing else on the exterior of the truck that I dislike. Minor things that are probably gonna need some maintenance over time, 
My wife isn't a huge fan of the wills that I picked. I picked that on purpose. I wanted the cheapest possible XL hybrid I could I could build, and I don't want to worry about if I hit something going to you know a project or something uh, and, and messing up the rim. But let's hop inside, and I'm going to talk about a few things inside before I focus on a really big list of the things that I do like. So hopping inside, this is the base model. The first thing, and this is nitpicking, I know, but I want to call it out. While this is very cool, the whole interior feels kind of like a Rubbermaid container. Aesthetically, it's not like one of my Land Rovers where it's wood grain and beautiful leather dashboards. <clears throat> but I didn't buy that truck for this. I bought this truck for projects and I wanted a lower end model. So you get the plastic, which, okay, I'm cool with. But what I notice is, and you may not be able to see, it just picks up any time I hit it with like a bag that has a little dirt or if I get in and out, it just shows every bit of dirt. And it seems like the truck, even with only 400 miles, is a lot dirtier than it should be. Not much you can do about that. Maybe just don't bang it up when you get in and throw stuff in. But uh, keep that in mind. If you're really picky about keeping a car clean, you know, that may be something that you want to take into account. On the XL Hybrid, I did not upgrade the floor mats. These are upgraded floor mats now, but the ones they send you are absolutely terrible. You can't even use them. I had to immediately, like the, as soon as my Ford Pass points came in, I ditched these. The mats that come with it are so lightweight. It's like a cheap towel almost. In fact, though cheap within the ones that came in my Fiat when I bought the Fiat 11 years ago. So if you're gonna have the cloth mats or the carpet mats, I mean, they just do not hold up. They just get filthy. And it felt like I was gonna put a hole through it after 400 miles of driving. So definitely something I didn't like, easy fix. And the good news is when you buy the vehicle and you sign up with Ford Pass, you get a bunch of points. I got the mats for free using points. Shouldn't complain too much, huh? Now the armrest on the driver's side worries me. When I get in, I typically lean in like this and put my elbow here and then I pull my body in. I'm not 100 pounds, so I'm putting a little bit of weight on it. I guarantee it, this is going to get an indentation and I guarantee it, it's going to break at some point. So I'm hoping a manufacturer or aftermarket comes up with a beefier armrest. You have to do that on some of the older Land Rover Defenders and Discoveries. And uh, I broke the one on my Fiat. I broke the one on my Chevy Colorado. I feel like this is gonna get tattered. And again, every little scuff in this truck shows. So I don't know what's up with that. I don't know if it's the type of plastic they're using, but everything shows. And this is just pleather, cheap leather. No doubt it's not gonna last, but we'll see how it goes. You might be wondering what this is. It's my auto desk. I keep it in here. This slides out. I can keep a laptop on it and uh, have a workstation when I'm doing projects and need it. I bought that many, 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 many years ago, and uh, I have one in my Silverado as well. So aftermarket, doesn't look the greatest probably, but functionality is what I need. Nitpicking again, I guess it's a good thing. I don't have any major dislikes. This seems so small and like fragile. I swear I have to adjust it every time I get in the truck, which leads me to believe it just bounces because it's so lightweight and it feels so cheap. No big, big deal, but it's an annoying one nonetheless. Look at my feet, or look at the gas pedal. This has become something that bothers me a lot, and it might just be because I'm not used to small trucks, but the gas pedal seems so small. I mean, it's like, I don't know, what is that? Four inches maybe? And the way I drive, I sit really far back, my, I'm kind of pressing the bottom of that four inches versus like this. I feel like it's just a very, it reminds me of the gas pedal in the Fiat. Very small gas pedal. I never use cruise control. I'm always keeping my foot down or doing things. And I feel like I'm slipping off the gas pedal more. Again, it might just be indicative of me driving much bigger vehicles. Um, not sure. But that's something I think I could probably put like a, gas pedal cover on it or something like i used to do way back in the day i'm just gonna try to get used to it for now so this is the biggie of mine the back seat you can see i've already 
already did some projects this morning. I absolutely love the back seat, but I hate it too. Now this here is a dog cover because I like to keep it on if my son spills stuff or I throw my dog in. But typically, I have a bunch of stuff in storage under the seats. And you would very easily pull this out and, and fold the seat back. However, if you have a booster seat or a car seat or anything like that, this is not a split seat. The whole seat comes up, which means you can't do it if you have a car seat in there. So I much, I wish, and I believe my, I'm positive my Chevy Colorado had a split seat where I could lift half of it up or bring half of it down. This is one solid bench seat. It all goes up, all goes down. So if you're storing stuff under the seat and you have one side loaded with tools or something, you're not gonna be able to get to the stuff underneath unless this whole seat is emptied. Kind of a pain, I wish it was a split back seat. Speaking of floor mats, it came with no mats in the back stock so you know with the upgraded mats i have really nice rubble ones which is great but uh keep that in mind if you buy a standard xl you're not going to even get carpet mats in the back and last but not least of a dislike and i think and i hope what you're seeing here is the dislikes are nothing too significant but i do have a dislike with the tech put the key in it's a high but you're not going to hear anything I absolutely love the technology. I can plug my Android phone into it. Super, super easy. And you're gonna see I have a like, and the like is I absolutely love this. But at the same time, I have a little bit of a dislike. One, it has to use a cable. So no matter what, to use Android Auto, you're gonna have to have it hooked into the cable. It works perfectly for the most part when you plug it in but i have noticed this is locked up on me a couple times but i doubt it's the screen i do think it's my android phone with a lot of stuff running so the dislike on the tech would be as much as i love it and i'm willing to deal with the cable because it does charge my phone i feel like it would be great if i could just bluetooth it or have android auto play without a wire however i'm told that's how it is in a lot of cars and with only 400, I guess 380 miles or so of driving, this screen has locked up on me two times already. This is an old or Pixel. It's about a year and a half of Pixel Pro. Is it the phone? I don't know. So that completes my dislikes. Nothing related to drivability. Nothing related to miles per gallon. Nothing related to power on the highway. Nothing related to cargo space and storage space. Everything I don't like about this truck, and I paid $24,975 for it, in my opinion, is a minor. Nothing major. Thumbs up to that. But let's focus on things that I really like. First and foremost of my likes, I do like the LED headlights. I know that that could become an issue if they get damaged. It also has, because I do have the Ford Copilot Assist, I did add that feature. It, uh, it will auto high beam and cut it off and do all that crazy stuff. So I think that's pretty cool. And I really do like the, um, the aerodynamics of this. But with that, you saw a dislike with all the bugs on the windshield. The size of the truck. I love mid-sized trucks for my projects. And I'm not doing any heavy hauling or towing. This is exceeding what I expected for a project truck. Meaning, I can go to a site where I'm picking up a bunch of stuff. I can throw it in the back easily. I can load it up. I haven't encountered any issues while I'm afraid to do something with it. And admittedly, I really do appreciate the tailgate. It's easy to put down. I'm not going with any of the power assist stuff. I don't like that. And uh, the height. If I'm loading a really old gas pump to a store, this is not too much higher than what my Chevy Colorado was. I thought the tailgate was going to be a little bit higher. It's not, so it makes loading a, uh, a breeze. Speaking of the bed area, you might remember when I talked about ordering this, I was concerned about how much space I would have in the back. It's advertised as a four and a half foot bed. It is four and a half foot to the tailgate. My Chevy Colorado, I believe, was five foot. So I thought losing a little bit of space. However, with the tailgate down, I can easily haul something that is longer than six feet. You have 79 inches to the end of the tailgate. 
So from my perspective, if I'm hauling a display for the building, hauling a display to take to the antique shop, I still have six foot of storage. I still have six foot of length. And it seems to me, from a width perspective, it's identical to the Colorado. It might even be a hair bit more because the wheel wells are much smaller. So thumbs up, I, uh, I still have a six foot length bed. Remember that old Chevy Silverado back there is an eight foot bed and I have a two foot box in it. So you're still getting a fair amount of space here. And if you ratchet strap things in, you're good to go. Okay, other exterior features I do appreciate. Um, I can easily add a tow hitch to it. Any truck, you can do that. Um, but, you know, it has a decent cover, and without it, it doesn't look funky or anything like that. So that's great. And I really am a fan of the camera. However, I've noticed my camera seems to pick up just a hair of the back bumper, which I guess is to be expected. So if something's on the, under the bumper, you could see it. But having a built-in camera versus what I used to have in the license plate seems like it's going to be protected and much better. A locking tailgate. I have had trucks that do not have that, like my Chevy Silverado. This is really handy because if you do have stuff in the back and it's heavy, if you can lock the tailgate, it makes it harder for somebody to steal it because they're gonna have to lift it out. But I'm also putting a topper of sorts, more to come on that. So it will be good that it can be locked in that sort of thing. The tail lights, standard bulbs. These are not LED. You got LED in the front, standard bulbs in the back. Why do I like that? Frankly, I feel like tail lights always seem to go kapoop and I can put some cheap bulbs in there pretty easily. So that might be an age thing where I like the simplicity versus LED, but I, I do appreciate that. I have yet to get gas in this truck, but it does have a locking cap, which seems kind of cool. It does not have a screw cap inside, but I think uh, the functionality is practical. And so far, I kind of like the simplicity of just going into the truck. In two seconds, I hit my fuel button, it pops it up, and there's no cap. That might be a common feature on modern cars. I don't know. I don't have any new, new cars. The 2016 Land Rover still has a screw cap. And then you just put it in there and away you go. I've yet to get gas, though. Uh-oh, the car seat is removed. Why is that? Because as much as I wish it was a split back seat, I absolutely love, 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 love. And with this, all you got to do is reach under with the little protector and it still opens and holds very easily. Absolutely love the storage under the seats. This is a pretty big bag full of straps and everything. You can see the depth. I put an umbrella in there to kind of sort of show it more. It's a really deep compartment that you can put stuff in. Absolutely love the storage. So when I need to haul something, all my straps are there. I just do wish it was a split seat so I didn't have to take the car seat out of the back. If you put a cover on it like I have, it still is functional and practical. I have to have this in the back because I haul a lot of stuff that's dusty and I would like to keep these cloth seats in relatively good shape. I feel like a lot of this car is 3D printed. I love all the storage. Perfect height to put water bottles and other stuff. Little notches like that. I can just put an umbrella in there and it holds. Big, big fan of how methodical and thoughtful they were with all of the storage compartments everywhere. Everywhere you look. Storage, cubbies, places to lay cell phones. Like when this is charging, you just lay it in there. Tuck the cable out of the way. Tons of storage in there. Thumbs up, great storage. This is kind of weird, but I love the pull on the door. It seems really tough and durable. It even seems like if I wanted to, I could take this off and do something very easily. Maybe it's access to the electric buttons, but it just feels strong and heavy. Talking about the doors, they seem to have some good oomph to them. I thought the doors were gonna be kind of thin and light. They seem to have some good width to them and a decent shut. Compared to my Colorado, it seems significantly like a beefier door. The Colorado, I would shut it and it felt like a little tin can. 
Now, what do I like the absolute most? I've talked about a lot of things I like in this truck, anywhere from the storage compartments, the functionality of the bed, the size of the truck, the door handles, all of the storage compartments I mentioned. But what is my absolute number one? So I talked about this briefly. I said I love the Android Auto, but it was giving me some issues. But when this is functioning, my God, I love it. You turn the car on, it instantly connects to your phone. You don't have to do anything. My Google Maps is loaded. It goes to play whatever I had on Pandora. I, and, and this is not unique to the Maverick. I just never had Google Auto or Android Auto. This is great technology in the vehicle and I absolutely love it. So I don't have to worry about any weirdness in here. It's using my Google Maps on my phone, all my apps on my phone. As long as my phone is up to date, that's up to date. Easy to configure, plug it into the cable, it picks it up, away you go. Android, great. But the biggie is the miles per gallon. Oh my goodness, 44.6 miles a gallon is what I'm getting on this. That's on a 321 mile drive. That is huge because gas prices in Maryland for premium are getting close to five bucks a gallon. 87 is right around four bucks a gallon. I have not put a tank of gas in this yet and I've had it for a week. Okay, so what else do I love about this? As I mentioned, I did add the Ford uh, Co-Pilot Assist, I believe it's called, which means if you go out of your lane, it kind of guides you back in. And I wasn't sure I was gonna like it. I actually added it because I, it seemed as though I had to add it to get uh, the manual window, which I'll talk about in a second in the back. But if you go into your menu settings here, you can go into the, um, the driver assist, which is just awesome, driver assistance. And you can basically have blind spot, pre-collision assist. You know, you can have um, lane keeping system. I have it on alert and aid. So that means if I start veering off, it actually kind of brings you back into the lane. You probably saw that on my first drive video um, and how that worked. So I absolutely love that. The other thing I really like in this menu is the uh, the way I can configure what I look at. So I when I start up, I'm always in this view. I like to know if it's running on gas or electric and how many miles I have to empty. You can actually go in here and you can configure that view and show what you want. Like I wanted to see my triple dominal, my average fuel, and you know what I was on, electrical gas. And the reason why I love that, when I'm driving, it's almost like gamification. I try to say, okay, I know if I ease up a little bit, I can get the electric, uh, the electric motor running and I can, I can do away with the gas engine. And that helps me kind of have fun with the MPGs and it doesn't make me drive like an old man anymore, I think, because I'm trying to take advantage of that. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of these technology features like the driver assist. I a uh, big fan of Android Auto. But the Myers per gallon by far is, is the absolute best for me. I just think it's phenomenal how, uh, how great it is. But what are some other interior features that I appreciate? Plenty of great charging areas. So you have your USB for an Android plug there. You have your standard USB below it. You have your cigarette adapter. And also in the back of the vehicle, you also have the cigarette type charger. Uh, if that's even what they call it anymore, I don't even know. I still do. But the, uh, the cigarette type charger in the back for your back passenger is there. So thumbs up. I think that's absolutely great because you have plenty of charging options in the, uh, in the Maverick. The other thing that I would say I like, if I have leather seats, I want it to be 100% real leather. I got absolutely spoiled in the Land Rover collection having that. I don't like pleather or that vegan leather or any of that. So I got cloth. Sometimes cloth seats seem junky. These actually seem really nice. They, uh, they've gotten dirty on me already and I was able to wipe them clean. I'll probably put a cover on the, uh, on the seat 
just to protect it a little bit longer but uh i thought that was a, a nice handy feature and uh, i do like the um the ability to easily adjust the seat most people want everything electronic i appreciate just a manual button and pump 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 because then i don't have to worry about any electronics falling in the seat so again that might be a drawback to some people on a base xl to me that's what i was looking for now i have not experienced or played with these buttons but this is like the terrain button so a you know a xl hybrid is going to be um front wheel drive only but i can push this bad boy let me get out of that screen and it changes i guess the driving mode so i could be in like slippery eco sport normal i've only been driving normal mode but i'm told eco mode is like even better gas mileage so click a little button and away you go i have no idea what this does Oh, traction control on, traction control off. So that's the traction control button. And I have no idea what this does. I'll have to look in the manual for that. I'll keep it off for now. So that is my 2023 Ford Maverick Hybrid XL. My likes and dislikes. It seemed like I might have had a lot of dislikes, but as I mentioned, it was nothing major. But my likes, the MPG is a phenomenal. Android Auto works great. The uh, ability to um, change like the modes for slippery to wet traction, I think is gonna be really handy because of four front wheel drive. Absolutely love all the storage compartments, the under seat storage, the uh, Ford uh, Co-Pilot 360 or whatever they call it, the driver assist for lane changing, the stance of the vehicle, the height of the vehicle, all things that I generally do appreciate. I've had no complaints with power, performance of the engine, the electric motors for hybrid seem to work great. And uh, that's, you know, that, that's all good news with the Ford Maverick XL. I'll end it with my absolute last love of this. It's the price. $24,975 is what I paid for this. I added the manual window in the back, which I forgot to talk about, actually. That's actually something I do like. I really am a fan of being able to open this by hand so thumbs up that would be my last like but to get this that was like 300 bucks i had to add whenever i built it maybe i did something wrong i don't know it said i had to add this ford pilot stuff and i was like what the hell is that but i don't have a choice it's 600 bucks i'll add it because i really want that window and i'm in love with that as well so that those two things jumped the price up to twenty four thousand bucks out of the base price of 22 and change but this is just so practical if you need a truck to haul stuff maybe beat it up a little bit get great gas mileage how can you go wrong with this i'm absolutely thrilled that i have it i'm absolutely thrilled that it's part of the car collection and more importantly i'm thrilled that it's going to be able to pick up where my chevy colorado left off on projects i'm doing with the cars when i commute up to the building and i'll benefit from those absolutely great mpgs i hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe to my youtube channel it means a lot to me and you're going to see a bit more content about this Ford Maverick in the future. Have a great day and we'll talk soon.